Hi guys, penultimate week of season 5 of Main Meister's High School Kerfuffle, and last week's game was Rampage, released by Bally Midway in 1986. This game got a mixed response from our regulars, most recognising that it's fun to play, and controlling giant monsters, destroying cities, is always going to appeal, but it's a game that's a little blatant in its coin munching setup. Personally that didn't bother me too much, as the primary function of arcade games is to make money. It was also accused of being a bit of a button masher, and although there is some truth to that, there are definitely some strategies required, and it's a game you can get better at. The game is definitely designed to limit playtime, especially in single player mode, as all of the army men are focused on you. Your health also drops over time on its own, which is one of the cheap tricks the game uses to try to get you to put more credits in. Even so, I enjoyed the game this week, and I definitely improved the more I played. I felt I was able to get further without taking as much damage, and got better at avoiding getting hit by the army guys, the helicopters, or the tanks that appear from level 4. A high score in this game is a combination of getting further, as well as getting as many points from each level. This involves doing as much damage to the buildings as possible, gathering items that appear in the buildings, and hitting the various other things that appear on screen, such as helicopters, cars, or signs. So definitely not a classic high score game, but still a decent one. So let's see how everyone did. We had 21 people playing this week, which has been another decent showing. We've got a first score from Colin Bryden, a regular on Alan's Discord, and a return from Schmupping Deku PG, who took part in Doidon Patchy. Those two are 16th and 20th respectively. Craig has his best finish of the season in 12th. Leagsy, Paul and Milthy are in 9th, 10th and 11th. Man Cave Arcade has matched his best finish this season in 8th, and you can see his performance on his YouTube as usual. Pearl is in 7th, and Colin has his best finish since the beginning of the season in 6th. Bob also has his best finish of the season, taking 5th, a good effort after choosing the game this week. I'm then in 4th, and our top 3 are made up of Mark in 3rd, Jaffa, who was looking like he might take this week's win in 2nd, but this week's winner narrowly squeezing out Juff by a few thousand points and becoming our 7th winner in 8 games is Graham. Graham is in 2nd or 3rd in every game this season after sitting out Puzzle Loop, and he finally gets a win. Well done to Graham, and it's definitely getting tight at the top of the league table. Here is the score distribution. The scores are very tight, with no gaps between the bins, and only 5 bins for all 21 people playing, reflecting there wasn't as much variation of how far people have got as we've sometimes seen. Behind our top 2, who are very close to each other, we see our biggest bin of 9 people showing just how close the top 10 were, and even then this group is not that far ahead of the others. The shape of this distribution reflects the game being pretty active in its attempts to limit playtime, with a narrow distribution of scores and not much separating first to last. And here is the difficulty curve. We see a pretty gradual increase in scores with a few steps suggesting there are multiple barriers for people to overcome in attaining a good score, but the scoring is still somewhat linear. One of our biggest jumps is also for our top two, suggesting that whilst this isn't one of the dominant performances that we've seen, it's still a strong one and Graham and Juff have separated themselves from the pack. For the overall leaderboard, we're still seeing some movement. Man Cave Arcade is up two places into 18th, Bob is our biggest mover, up five into 14th, and Paul is up two into 13th. In our top 10, there is much less movement. The only swap is Mark getting ahead of Pearl for fourth. That battle for fourth will go down to the wire. Our top three remains the same. I've now slipped away a little from Graham and Juff, but the gap between those two is very tight, and less than the difference between first and second, so it's going down to the wire. The style of game we get is definitely going to influence who comes out on top here. I'm sure Juff will hope for a shmup, and maybe Graham would prefer an arcade classic. So I've got the games loaded into the selector again. That wing for Graham sees his game doubled in chance, and I've removed Bob's games after having Rampage come up. We've got 74 games here, so let's see what we get. Set things going. Okay, <laughs> okay. So we've got um, Cubert, a selection from uh, from Charlie Farr, Dave. Um, so I saw Dave playing Cubert uh, recently uh, on a live stream, and yeah, he's pretty good at it. Um, interesting classic game. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a good one. So this week's game is Cubert, released in 1982 by Gottlieb. This is a pretty iconic game with the classic isometric playfield and a joystick that was rotated 45 degrees from normal. When I try to play with a horizontal joystick, I always forget which way I need to go and make mistakes, as I do so here. So I'd really recommend trying to rotate whatever controller you're using to mimic the arcade machine. 
For this reason, I've never spent much time with this game, or its numerous ports and clones. This game was a pretty popular one in the arcades, and follows the Pac-Man formula of using a cute character to help get people interested. Cubit is quite likeable, and his little sweary messages when he dies are pretty funny. I'm not sure how much I'll enjoy this game, but hopefully it'll grow on me, and it's another one I'll be able to play on the Mister. We'll be playing the US Set 1 ROM with default settings as usual. I'll be interested to know if this is a popular one or not, and I'll be back next week with the scores and the final game of the season. See you then.